Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. We serve a covenant keeping God. It's our obedience of faith that commits his integrity. You know something? God will not do your part for you. He waits on you to do your part. Then you have committed him to do his part. God won't pray kingdom advancement for you. He will only reward you openly for advancing his, his kingdom in your prayer closet. God won't go outreach for you. Outreach for you. He will only go with you as you go. God won't give for you. You want to prosper, you give. Then you have committed him to prosper you. You see, any faith that seeks to make God absolutely responsible for the invest of your life is an irresponsible faith. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. No, God come and do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Then he will do his part. You can trust him for his part. He's not a Father Christmas God. He's a covenant keeping God. Every outstanding, humbling testimonies we hear in this place, people took scriptural steps to commit God's integrity to confirm his word. People took steps. You don't go forward sitting down. You go forward taking steps. Steps of obedience. Steps of obedience is what changes people's stories. Steps of obedience is what changes people's stories. Many, many stories are ordained for dramatic change in this season. Your own inclusive. Everyone under the sound of my voice, wherever you may be around the world today, taking steps of obedience is what changes people's story. Doing what he says is what commit him to confirm his word in our lives. We serve a covenant keeping God. My covenant will I not break. The scriptures cannot be broken. I won't do your part for you. Do your part as directed and instructed in scriptures. And then you have created a future because I'll confirm my word. Until our part is played, God is not committed. That's the message I think we can even close. Those testimonies are simply teaching how that you must take scriptural steps to commit God's integrity. To confirm his word in your life. You just must take it. Now somebody has an international job. Took his leave. And his wife to go on outreach. This is you are mad. This is madness. They have turned your brain upside down. You know the brothers of Jesus thought that. He was beside himself. And his friends. They met. They heard the meeting. The way this madness is going. Before it breaks forth to the market. <laughs> Let's go and take him. They went to they went to take him. They went to take the deliverer. <laughs> to deliver him. Man, you have to take steps. Grace to take scriptural steps at all times. So as to commit to integrity as a covenant keeping God. Grant it to me right now. Come and pray that prayer. Grace to take scriptural steps. In Jesus' precious name. Jesus, thank you for your grace of supernatural settlement released to all of us yesterday. Thank you for the one hour turnaround testimonies. Thank you for the overnight turnaround testimonies. Thank you for one day turnaround testimonies. And thank you for three days turnaround testimonies. The week is declared a week of settlement testimony yeah. in the name of Jesus. Speak to us this morning by your word and move us forward in Jesus name. Amen. It's my year of breaking limit. Please get seated. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Every revival 
which is a move of God, which is also divine visitation, is ordained to move God's people forward. You are moving forward this time. Also, let's recognize that every true revival is validate, validated by massive salvation of souls. Amen. An ingathering of the harvest into the house of God. Habakkuk 2, I mean 3 verse 2, Habakkuk prayed, saying, Revive their work, O God, in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year, make known thy power and wrath. Remember mercy. He went forth for the salvation of his people. Verse 13. The Lord thy God in the midst of this mighty, he will save. So salvation is massive salvation. Real conviction of the Holy Ghost. Leading to massive conversion. Uh, or what validate a revival. And I will gather them. <laughs> I will gather them at that time. And I will gather them. So we saw Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. I mean, um, 18 and 19 and 20. He is busy gathering in the people. That's a revival. It's not big speeches. It's massive invasion of people into the kingdom. Glory to God. So church growth is one of the factors that validate a revival. Praise God. And we saw that when the revival of the early church broke out. 3,000 people, first day, bow. And then 5,000 added, Acts 4-4. And then, multitudes of men and women, Acts 5.14. The number of the disciples multiplied greatly, Acts chapter 6 verse 7. And then, almost the whole city came to hear the word of God, Acts 13 and 44. So, church growth is one of the principal validations of a revival. Amen. Amen. There shall be Strange dimensions of church growth across every ministry, every denomination, Amen. and across the nations of the earth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's God's agenda for the end time. It shall come to pass in the last day that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills. And people shall flow. So we are moving from church growth to church flow. People shall flow. People shall flow. People shall flow. He said, and many strong nations. Amen. Amen. Many strong nations. And many nations shall come and say, come on, let us go up to the mountain of the house of the Lord. Many nations. Many nations. Many nations. Amen. Amen. Massive influx of souls is God's agenda for the end time church. Amen. Amen. So this week our exhortation is captioned no church grows without a people on the go. No church grows without a people on the go. And let me mention this because we are just introducing the subject. Now, in the growth of the church lies the glory of the church. I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I will also glorify them. I will, I will elevate them. I will change their story. And they shall not be small. They shall not be mediocre. As I multiply the church, I will glorify the saints that are in partnership with me. And he told us what that means. <laughs> and their nobles shall come out of themselves. They are going to show up proceed from the midst of them. 
For who is he that engage his heart to seek unto me? So engaging our heart in this revival time will turn nobles out of ordinary individuals. Amen. Amen. And captains out of people that have no identity. Praise God. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19 and verse 21. So engaging our heart is what makes us a partake of the glory. The glory that comes along in a revival. Engaging our heart in seeking the face of the Lord. No church grows without the people on the go. Go to the highways and edges and compare them to come that my house may be filled. You can't fill his house without being on the go. The church that must grow must remain on the go for Jesus. Well, uh, it's important for us to also know the cost of going. Let, let's understand the cost. So that when you meet it, you will not turn back. The cost of going. I'm not ashamed. So you, you are going to be visited with shame and reproach. Yeah, yeah, man. Get up, my friend. People can't think. You let Bishop confuse you. Can't think. He's taking advantage of you. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believes. I'm not ashamed. Amen. Amen. You'll be called names. If they call the master of the house, Bezebub. Now, what would they call those of his own household? Matthew 10, 24 and 25. So you'll be called names. Amen. You, you better know this. <laughs> Number three, you'll be hated of all men. Matthew 10, 22. Is this, uh, you better, he's not a member of our family. Forget it. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. If you don't know that these things come along with your going, you can soon become discouraged and pack off. Tell your sister to stop disturbing us with our preaching. Then the sister now called our own younger one. Why don't you go home after church? What are you going from house to house for? If what you are preaching is the truth, why has God not given you children? From your own mother's sister. Amen. It's to make you pack off. He said, Jesus, you are the one they are talking to. I'm still going. Oh Lord, my dear, you, you won't discourage me. She went and God turned her shame to glory. Amen. God turned her shame to glory. One of our daughters here was sharing during their lunch hour uh, fellowship in our office on Psalm 34 verse 8. No good thing we do with hood from then I woke up to, to one obnoxious person there said excuse me madam, is having children a good thing? He said yes. Why has God not given you one? Amen. She remembered the earlier testimony I shared. He said now I know it's my turn. And she became pregnant. Amen. Come on give the Lord praise. If you don't know you know, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, the Bible said, we are foreseen also that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Lay those sins aside and the sin which doth easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that said before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame. This if you don't despise the shame, you never assess the realm of glory. Despising the shame and see him now set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He despised the shame to assess the realm of eternal glory. He despised the shame. He despised the shame. Amen. Now you see those fellows in Zephaniah chapter, Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. Uh, the Lord that go in the midst of you will save. Now verse 18. He said, I will gather them that are, of a sorrowful, that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. That is, they, they hate to see what is happening. They are part of trying to get people out uh, who have did, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. They can't stand the reproach on God's people. 
they are concerned. So they are on a rescue mission. Now, watch. Verse 19. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict such people. I will save her that hurted and gather her that was driven out and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. That's the beauty. If you can see the glory, you won't mind the shame. If you can see the glory ahead of you, you won't mind the shame. Now verse 20. Now he said, at that time will I bring you again even in the time that I will gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes. You better know one of the capital costs of being on the go for Jesus is the reproach of man. Praise God. Hallelujah. But that's the gateway to your God-ordained realms of glory. In Hebrews chapter, 12, I mean chapter 13, verse 12 and 13, Hebrews 13, 12 and 13. Now, wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his approach. You can't be on the go without being prepared to despise the shame. You ask us whether we meant anything to the people that were senior to us while growing up. You are like people with lost their mind. What's the matter? <laughs> if you don't have what to do, you better go and look for what to do. What is uh, Jesus saves? Did I say I was lost? <laughs> Amen. So, I'll go to her. So, where are you yourself? <laughs> All those very insinuating, very disturbing statements. But the moment you know that shame is a covenant gateway to your realms of glory, you despise it and move ahead. Glory to God. Amen. You better know that. It's the dawn of a new day for you. Amen. No church grows without a people on the ground.